All right, calling the Historical Commission meeting of Lower Makefield to order. Uh, first agenda item is review and approval of August 2024 meeting uh, minutes. Um, I have I have a few changes for you, um, Helen. There, um, Suzanne's name was in the minutes. Oh, you got that? Okay. And then there was two typos. Um, under, under the ghost tour advertising has a Z and uh, QR codes MA may be ready. So uh, Joe asked that you submit the, those to Katie as soon as everything is official. Does anybody else have any changes? All right, move to accept the minutes. Mitch, second. James, all in favor? Hi. Everyone? All right. That was easy. Um, I'm going back and forth between two streets. Treasurer's report, which I am also giving. Um, Tom wants us to know that we have two accounts, the foundation account and the LMT general fund account. According to Allison, the person at the township, Expenses are drawn on the LMT general fund account until depleted and then drawn from the foundation account. Please remind everyone that all expenses for reimbursement should be sent to Tom. Um, also, this is not budget, but uh, the ice cream, I'm gonna just say it because it's at this place. The ice cream cart is gonna be there from 4.30 to 6.30 this Saturday, and there's enough ice cream for 30 to 40 people. They will supply cups, spoons, napkins, et cetera. Okay. Sorry, I should have separated that out, but whatever. <laughs> our, our year budget for 23-24 is $22,450. Our funds as of September 1st are $21,250. It seems like we're not spending any money. <laughs> um, the current expenses for this month the ice cream truck is $4,650. And Tom and Kathy each are taking a historic class that is $275 each. So total expenses are $1,200. As a reminder to everybody, we are all required to take four units <laughs> to stay legit. Me, Kathy. Um, th that those are some of those classes from Rutgers that Joe sent us. All right, so that's treasures. Awesome, Slate Hill Cemetery. So I'm, I don't think we have to accept, right? All right, let's move to Slate Hill Cemetery and I'm gonna turn it over to Monica. Sure. Uh, first, um to cover our weekly articles in the Bucks County Herald right now. Our first three are in. The sec one is getting published tomorrow. Seems like it's every Thursday. <coughs> um, I, so we just have the last one, Helen, the school one that still needs to get cut down somehow. Um, so if you could, I just need that by next Friday. <coughs> um, and that's that for the articles. Um, our event this Saturday, uh, as mentioned in the treasurer's report, um, I could use, A, I'm hoping everyone here is attending. Is everyone attending? Yes, Saturday. Yes, Helen, you're in. Bring your family. Good, we don't have enough ice cream for all of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, so just logistics wise, um, Jeff's bringing his tent at three. I'd love um, a couple of hands at three to help put it up. He says it's going to take like 10 minutes. Um, my husband and I will be there. So anyone that could come help set up. We're getting an AV system from Monica at the parks department. I'm going to get that there. Goal is to be up and ready at four o'clock. Um, um, so we're in good shape. I would like um, a couple of people standing by and able to give mini tours of the cemetery, which I think happens naturally. Um, and that's about it. I think it's going to be pretty smooth sailing for any questions, because I think the invite's a little confusing. The We officially start at 430. Ice cream served, at, excuse me, gelato is served at 430. But the event, the ceremony, the event will take place at five. Mike. 
turnout. Uh, the question is turnout. Um, no, and I would love Joe here to help with that. Um, right now we have on the Facebook page, eight going and 22 interested. I don't think, I think Victor and I are maybe on the eight going. <laughs> um, and on our, we have the Google drive of all the invites um, that went out specific to specific people, mostly from Joe. And that hasn't been updated last month. He said he didn't want to bug them that far out. So um, I reached out to him today and I didn't get an update. So I'm hoping we can get a few of the big names we were going after that might bring a little more attention. It is on Facebook. Yep, it is on, it is on Facebook. Um, Monica at the parks, I gave her the info today. She's gonna do a blast for it. So I think, I mean, but again, we have a gelato for, what is it, 30 to 40 to 50 people it said. So yeah, 30 to 40. So I think, you know, I mean, it's, it's gonna be small. It's us patting ourselves on the back and eating ice cream. So I'm not sure how many other people are attending, but hopefully a few. Um, and we're also taking down afterwards if we can get everyone to just stay a few minutes. Again, I think it'll take like 10 minutes. Uh, and we'll have a few chairs, but no tables or anything like that. Just about 10 chairs for anyone that needs to sit. Good. What time do you want us there? Do you want us there at three? I would like you there at three. Okay. Uh, yeah, that would be great. Do you need any additional folding chairs or anything? I, I don't think so. I'm getting, I'm getting 10 matching from the parks department. So it'll look nice. Because I was thinking, I know we were all offering, but it would look wonky with all of our different chairs. So we're good. Monica's been super helpful. Um, so that's that. Ghost tour. Um, I have a lot of individual questions, but I'm not going to bother you all with it. Um, we have 25 tickets sold so far. Uh, three of them gave additional donations. So, so far we've raised $215, which is just exciting that it's working. Um, and I think looks like Mitch brought in all the yard signs. Awesome. So we'll let Victor kind of dole those out how he feels um, necessary. So I, I'll pass it off to everyone to kind of do a quick update of where they are and what you need from us. Okay. Um, I just finished up the latest of the, um, it's on the latest uh, version of the flyer and uh, Victor had asked me to get a couple printed up so he can get uh, started on it. Now that we have the approved artwork, that should be in about another, what's today? Today's Wednesday. I should have it by next Wednesday. The uh, it, Now it's actually 250 or 500. The pricing is not that much different. So, I mean, you know, I can start with 250. We're going to always order another 250, but. Um, and as far as uh, the invitation goes, oh, I'm sorry, that's for the other event. Um, as far as the um, uh, fundraising and the sponsorship forms that we've been working with Jim here, we produced a, a form with a layout that would show what the expenses are if you want to um, do an ad in the, in, in the book. And the book, we kind of need to have everything together no later than say October 7th. Yeah. Uh, October 7th gets us what delivery date? Uh, it'll get us... Um, before the event. <laughs> the day before the event? Probably. He wants it earlier. So you guys need to well, di then discuss I've got to get the information about who we are sponsoring and who we are going to be featuring in the in the booklet. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not planning on making a 11 by 17 like we did last year. I want to do a yeah one like that. Yeah. Uh, but Does I. Start to change that? No, nothing changes because it's. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, we need. Um, we need to have the information of who we're featuring as Jim, we did last year. Jim wants them finished by by October 11th. So if you can back time that, doesn't have to be at this moment, but tonight, let's agree. Okay, well, that's is. that's October 11th. Mm -hmm. that's, that's going to be late. Right. That's going to be a little tough because we'll have to pay probably extra for shipping for uh, everything. The event is when? The 19th. 19th. All right, yeah, I can make it by then, yes. Still with the 7th deadline? You can go to the 11th. Is that what you're asking? No, he wants them in hand by the 11th. Oh, that's finish. doable. Sure. So, so is the 7th. with the 7th. Okay. And again, that's under the assumption I'm going to get the names of the uh, people we're, we're talking about yeah. and to get as many sponsorships into the book as possible. Earlier. Okay. Yeah. And what I'd like is every every time that you have a sponsor who's committed, just let's work them one at a time so we can get the artwork rolling. Great. Awesome. Okay. Um, so, I'm sorry, excuse me. So you just need the name of the people that were scripting. 
just like last year, you gave me, we put up, a, uh, remember we put a picture of a, of a uh, tombstone and we wrote a little piece underneath each one with their names and what have you. I'll get it then. Okay, it. you got on it, okay. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's, and then and when I get, we'll format it accordingly. We'll have a couple of versions of it. And awesome, yeah, so we'll start getting you stuff right away. What, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. um, we're talking about, we're talking about this. Mm -hmm. We're talking about distributing this uh, before the event. So that these are actually in sponsors' stores or wherever their right. businesses are before the event, so they get some benefit from this. Or even this can be distributed at Wawa in Yardley, you know. So these, I mean, wherever mm -hmm. you can put them. So the tombstones themselves, they're going to sit outside the cemetery. Talking about the schemes outside. I'm talking about the, the right the signs outside the cemetery. Mm -hmm. Is it the same time? Everything is going to be the same time. Okay. Believe it or not, the signs actually take less time hmm. to print, but more time to create because they're all going to be uh, individual. Okay. You're not having a bulk print out okay. like you do on the book. Got it. Okay. Um, Jim, do you want to update us on any of the other sales stuff going on? Yes, I have to change my size. <laughs> yeah, size is here? No. I mean, actually, um, I'm getting pretty much all these sales materials that I need, and it's just simply a matter of going out and Hitting, hitting them up. Awesome. You know, that's, that's really, that's, that's, that's the bottom line. And don't forget to use us. I think all of us have contacts with local businesses or for the masses that are going to watch this. If you'd like to sponsor, hit up that guy. Um, but yeah, there's, you know, anyone that has any ideas. I know Helen has, has had emailed about some people, so we'll talk later. Um, but I, you know, I'm sorry. I wanted to mention one thing. The, the effort this year is going to be basically almost like a partnership. Uh, I would love to see the sponsors benefit from this as opposed to just handing over money. Yeah, I agree. Know, so That's the goal, right? Money. Yeah. Is, is hopefully we'll be able to drive business back to them. And that's an incentive for them to be involved. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that comes with the sales pitch. <laughs> well, and what's cool, and I can give you this information as you're going, but now with the ticket sales, we actually have information on like localities of where people are coming from. Oh, that's great. So I know already we have, it's a lot of Yardley, but there's Langhorn coming. If and you then, have you know, that information, yeah. great. Okay, that's great. One of the other things that Jim and I talked about was seeing if they're willing to put a promotional coupon in their ad. Right. Yeah. Uh, in which case we can put that in the booklet. Easy. Uh, whatever they want to do, we could put it in there and we can even put it on the sign. Yeah. Look at us wheeling and dealing. We're not spending money. We're making money. People can advertise. All right. Um, and last thing I wanted to say, it's gone. So there you have it. We really, we have one meeting. Oh, the last thing was Jeff, who isn't here. But I'm going to give him major props. Jeff's daughter is an actress and she um, has showed up with seven actors that want to all be involved and likely can get costumes too. So. We actually currently have more performers than we need. So if there's a couple, you know, couples or something like I, you know, I was thinking, oh, Henry Baker, we just add his wife. Like there's a, there's stuff we could do. So we'll talk offline about that stuff, but we're in, we're in good shape with all that. So um, that's it. The grant. Oh, the grant. I have no, sorry, I have no movement on the grant, except I need to talk to David. And I think, especially because we still need to do the triple bid, I think spring is going to be our first round, which is totally fine within the limits of, we still have plenty of time to do the two rounds within the time frame that we have. So we'll just be doing both throughout next year, but I got to just talk to David or whatever. Anyways, I'll talk to him, but no update. David has your back. Yeah, yeah. So Monica needs to talk to David, put that in writing. <laughs> I need to do that. Got that, Helen? <laughs> Make it red. Uh, oh, um, Jeff wanted to add to the ghost tour um, that he purchased a large amount of glowing necklaces and sticks to sell as merchandise. Okay, so next agenda item is the historical research resources survey um, that Jeff is working on, who's not here. He reports no responses from the entities related to the RFP. Um, yeah. So he's gonna plan on making some calls tomorrow and uh, see where uh, companies are at to put in bids to do that work. 
Um, next is America 250 planning. Does anybody have anything on that? Or I don't feel like we have kind of anything new on that. Anybody, anybody? All right. I have a question about America 250. Um, have, has the group considered doing any type of like an audio tour, uh, you know, like a driving tour of historic uh, buildings? No, and actually, can you say your name for the- Yes, Dawn Bird. Thanks. <laughs> um, no, I don't think we have. I mean, I think, I think what we keep sort of circling back to on this is uh, capacity, mm -hmm. our capacity. So I think we're open to any and all ideas, but- um, Yeah, absolutely. I found on the Google Drive um, a document called Lower Makefield Historic Landmarks Guide. There's like 50 historic buildings and some of them have uh, something written up about them. So I actually went in and I started, uh, there's a software called Voice Map, and I've actually started creating this um, just to give you a demo of it, maybe at a future meeting. That yeah. would be awesome, Dawn. We love our volunteers. It's on with um, uh, the project, it's on, uh, goes on with the project to um, perhaps mark our houses with some kind of a flag or a banner. So the historic houses are, are or structures, not necessarily houses, are marked um, for in time for the 250th. So they'd have something that would be permanently up most of the year. That would be great. Yeah, I love that. Let's work on that, Don. Great. Um, so if you're volunteering to work on that, we gladly accept that. <laughs> call it the marker tour and guide marker audio tour i think it's so smart because the most of the work's done which is genius thank you <laughs> uh also um if you can get monica's dad to record anything he was a excellent joshua anderson recording last year amazing <laughs> except for scaring the children because he talked out of a tree <laughs> second um, request from a local um, person who owns one of the historic houses uh, was a suggestion to contact the um, Delaware um, River Port Authority people to ask for the space in the old house by the canal for some kind of display the on the 250th as well. And that was if she was a former um, chair of the commission, Michelle Schlumbach. She, she contacted me, I went over and we had toured her house and she's, it's for sale, sadly. <clears throat> so um, if you're interested in a historic house, um, it seems to be having difficulty selling on a real estate market where everyone wants everything. It is white, the one on River Road? Plastic. Is it on River Road? No, it's on Woodside Road. Okay, I'll stab it. Um, I think it's for sale for a million four or something like that. But it's, <laughs> um, it's a beautiful house. It comes with a large, big lot of land and it used to be called it was it's the Cornelius Slap House. Oh nice. Got it. <clears throat> well so just yeah you'll have it in the minutes about that other suggestion. Yeah, so as we as we as we move forward that um we can kind of circle back to them. We had talked about a bike tour and I mean there's time to organize those things in the, the next year. Whereas this, you know, we kind of have to get started on what we're going to be putting into a displays. Mm -hmm. Well, I think ultimately we need somebody to be in charge of this project and we don't have that person yet. <laughs> I don't know. No one was willing to take it last month. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know that anybody is willing to take it this well, month. But it, This is probably going to be distributed among the fresh blood coming in. <laughs> Well, um, the other priority for new um, members is the archival project, because that's what Lisa, Lisa and Chris were working on. And since both of them resigned, um, that leaves a gap. So I know that that was, that's I, I believe that that's Joe's priority um, for that. Well, and, and Jim Majewski, um, because it's, the township's required to start archiving its material. So that's, that's going to look better for him. Okay. Uh, anything else on America 250? No. In fact, I have next topic, the archival project, so I've got that down next. 
What are we oh, is that... with now? Uh, no, the next, uh, the next, actually, we're just booking through this. I thought this I meeting was super long. I think this is a juicy topic, though, okay. um, and I'm going to give some updates. So the demolition ordinance status. So um, I've been checking in at the Board of Supervisors meetings, and the solicitor um, has said, I think, for the last three meetings that she is working on it, she is working on it, she is working on it. Now, in fairness to the solicitor, this ordinance overlaps like all sorts of codes um, with different things. So there's a lot of sorting out to do that um, needs to happen. I think it's going to come before the Board of Supervisors soon. We, the initial draft, we're supposed to get it when they get it because we, um, I think, really want to be there at the table. Um, so I'm going to back up and give, um, an update on the past properties and then kind of talk about, I think the main topic for us tonight is to figure out what is historic, <laughs> no small topic. Um, one of the reasons we are moving forward on the, or we started working towards getting the board of supervisors to pass the demolition ordinance is that. We have been following right now, there are three, um, I think, initial properties that they've been talking about um, demolishing. Torbert Farm, Fieldstone Harris, and um, Wright, is it Wright Farm or is it Wright? Okay, Wright Farm. Um, I checked in with Dan at LMT. So I checked in on all of the projects and I checked in with Dan. Um, so no demolition permits have been approved um, as of, I guess, two weeks ago when I checked in with him before my vacation uh, for any of those. When I looked at the status of the projects, Torbert's uh, current deadline is 1231. Fieldstone Harris just had their traffic and environmental impact in May, 2024. And um, the last update on the right was they're doing some PennDOT recommendations for 332. So I have set up a spreadsheet um, so that as we move forward, we can continue to monitor these projects and any new demolition permits that come in so that we could be a little bit more proactive than we have been in the past, hopefully with this ordinance um, being a tool. I have been trying to get from um, LMT um, and hopefully soon. Um, I've asked for the past 10 years worth of permits so we can kind of see, um, we had the information back the last three years that Joe had, but kind of see what we have lost mm -hmm. because I think that that helps us when we talk to the Board of Supervisors to best understand it. Um, so, yeah, so now the question is, so all of those, are still kind of pending. We don't know anything else about them right yet. So right now our, our job is to figure out what would be protected in the demolition ordinance. So I know that um, I think for me, <laughs> I mean, and, and definitely I think Joe concurs, we definitely want the 31 remaining homes from the 18th century. Um, I am definitely an advocate for getting all of the homes pre 1900. Um, and then we have to sort of think about um, any post-1900 homes and what would make them historic or what would make any of these others historic if we don't want to do just based on age. Um, and what, what would that look like? And I think it's also important for us to be very clear that this is around the demolition of... <laughs> I've done that. Um, the demolition, this is not about, and this is not saying that people cannot repair their homes or do anything else, um, because I think that there may be a little confusion about that. Right. Well, and also, it doesn't even necessarily mean we can say you can't do this, but it puts steps in place so the community can be involved a little bit more in the decision making process. But ultimately, people's property is their property. Right. Correct. <clears throat> So let me open it up to anybody who has kind of Helen. Been uh, watching it for the last 40 years. Yeah. Um, actually, 50 years coming up. I mean, that's really scary. Um, yeah, we, we're losing so much every year that it's, um, it's really distressing beyond belief. 
Um, the problem is how do you define an old house? Because there is really no structure in, in Lower Makefield that I can think of that's absolutely pristine um, to the day it was created. All have been adjusted by uh, later occupants, been added to, subtracted from. Um, there are auxiliary structures that may be older than the, than the house per se. What are we gonna do about them? Um, how, do, how do they come under the, uh, the, the jurisdiction of this ordinance? Um, having the, somebody in the family working on an old house in Lower Makefield, I have found that um, often um, subsurface, there are many structures that have never been explored that are actually still there. <clears throat> and um, I think it's in the benefit of any homeowner um, to have things documented and to have things um, preserved if you possibly can. Maybe the upper structure was wooden and it could have been removed, but especially stone move, artificially manipulated by man buildings need to be preserved. Um, whether they're barns or, or, or root cellars or, or well buildings, um, we can learn so much from each one. Um, and if they have to be moved or de demolished because of modern living, then that's what's going to have to happen. But shouldn't we be preserving that that well, that construction? So I don't. I don't. I, I mean, I don't think the issue amongst us is whether this should happen or not. I think we're all on 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 target with that. It's we need a definition. And I was actually just pulling up the Warwick. Um, Yes, it's a nice plan. Yeah, the Warwick uh, one to look at what their um, what their uh, requirements are. I'm not seeing it very quickly, but um, we need to kind of figure out. Well, we have the canal locks as well. We have, um, you know, sort of mechanical things that are created that are also already some of them on the national register, but never effectively documented by our township. So we need to be doing that. Um, there's also, but that's a separate issue because we don't own that. Yeah. This is like talking about houses in the township, houses and other structures. Because I'm not, I'm not even thinking I'm about like barns and yeah. whatever else. Yeah. Helen, we're gonna get lost in the details, and I think every every that's what the permit process is for is figuring out all those details. I think we just need to kind of find an overarching, what do we think? And I assume as a historical commission, I want to be like anything like craftsmen and older save, but it's also figuring out what's, you know, what's going to be appropriate for our community. Well, technically, I mean, <clears throat> the national register registers properties after 50 years, right? <clears throat> We're looking literally at properties in the 1960s. Right, which is insane. I mean, that's like a huge majority of our township. I don't think yeah, that, we can create that kind of paper. Do we know that. which house was the first Toll Brothers house? Um, no, but that's also part of the, the survey that we're doing, Helen, is yeah, to get exactly. that information. Well, and with that information, critical. we can be, a, we can That is make critical, Monica. And that's, that's the township's responsibility to get that done. Which is ours. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, not the township system. We're working on we're, it. We're su we are supervising it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, again, it's, it's so Warwick does look at 50 years. I don't think Which any I, of us are comfortable or not. not enough of us are comfortable with 50 years. Um, yeah. So we need to sort of look at. Um, I mean, I don't know anything about architecture. To me, houses from the 30s and earlier are cool. I, <laughs> that's my take. Um, not very. Yeah, I mean, I think we're looking for a little bit more of a nuanced. Yep. Um, I think we're going up to probably, <clears throat> I, I know Joe and I talked about, about 1970 as a cutoff <clears throat> for, the, for the survey. No, okay. oh, the yeah, survey. survey. Right, right, right. That means houses up to 19 survey. Right. So do we, I think for the ordinance purposes, we should go up to um, post-World War II, just like 1945. Okay, so if we if if that's the number we go with, what's you know I'm not arguing with that. Um, I think we need to have coherent bullet point reasons as to why that's it because we need to sell this to the board of supervisors and you know the community. Well, that would protect all of Edge Hill Gardens and a lot of Westover, um, most Edge Hill Gardens. 
and um, the area around Ferry Road, which is the first area of our county that was developed for tract housing. Also, I mean, the other issue is besides date. So say, say we're looking at the date of 1945. Um, what about something that was built in the 1970s by a famous architect That's or like, how are we gonna tweak out those pieces also? Well, <clears throat> we know there are several Makanichi houses in the township um, and other architectural um, designers have done work in the township. So we can find that out from current um, permits that are on file, hopefully. Township has a pretty good file of permits. So when you, when a drawing comes in, you would have the, the um, it would have been submitted to township. Now, I don't know where they are, but I'm sure Jim would know. Someone has to. But, but also you, somebody has to know who all of these architects and stuff are. I know a lot of it. And we have several, I mean, Jennifer Stark and my husband who are both on township boards are registered architects. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that the other thing I didn't mention um, that um, Joe asked Harb to, I mean, I know you have an insight with Harb. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they've discussed that yet or their meeting is afterwards. No, it's okay. We're not making decisions. Yeah. Um, has Harb discussed it yet? Do you know? Oh, yes, they have. And they've made some suggestions back to us, but I don't know if we have received them or okay. has come back. Yes, they, they, had, they had definition issues as well. Okay, were, were they able to come to a, any conclusion? Okay, so we need what came to Harp. Has it. Yeah. Okay, because I haven't seen it yet, but maybe Joe has it. I know Joe's on vacation. It should go to Joe, yeah. Yeah. Um, I know none of you are really interested in it. <laughs> this is not everybody's passion. I absolutely, but I have no education to back up. I just well, Vic, want to see I start my class tomorrow night. Victor <laughs> has a real estate license, so what can you tell us? Uh, nothing, well, nothing, nothing terribly important. I mean, it's just such a, um, I'd like to at least, you know, maybe make a, an effort at least to define spaces in terms of how mm -hmm. we define them. The, um, the Upper Dublin ordinance has that. It has a two tiers with listed properties on tier one and then properties on tier two. For I think theirs was pre-1800 and then 1800 to 1890. So that, that um, is, is definitely a good suggestion. Um, and maybe the stipulations for how much has to be done for the later properties would in, would actually um, benefit their preservation more by doing that. I'm also curious about you know since we're we're getting this ordinance done in 2024, and it can be quite a process to get an ordinance done and or changed. How do we um, word anything for the future? Um, you know because. You know, maybe those 80s houses are historic someday. <laughs> I mean, I guess in theory they are. Well, it, as long as we maintain every 10 years, that's that that original survey that the township is also funding at this point in time, then we should be it should be easy to keep up and just add 10 years at a time at the start of every decade. Um, kind of picking what what you, what you can from existing once, once you get up to the 30s and the 40s, you're going to have permits to use. So you're going to know what who is building it to begin with, what kinds of materials are being used, and you can look and see, is it similar to the way it's described or not similar? And then, and then make an adjustment for whether it's on tier one, tier two, or tier th three, perhaps.
Yeah, I mean, I'm wondering if there should be uh, three tiers, like, you know, so pre-1800 is, I think, our highest level, those last 31 houses that we have. A tier two, I think, you know, maybe through 1900 or 1899, however we want to define it. And then whether or not we decide whether we want to go to what you said, post-World War II or not, yeah. or and or add any buildings that are significant for reasons other than age. Well, one of the things that was so striking about the 100th anniversary of Levittown was that they couldn't find an original Levittown house. None. There was nothing that hadn't been changed in a Levittown house. They could find ones that had close to the original, they had really weird um, roofing tiles that are no longer available. So they could find roofing tiles like that on one house, next house, but inside it was all new. You know, so, so you have to allow for that. And basically all of our ordinance is only gonna be on exterior presentation. So if somebody saw it, we'd have nothing to say about the interior use of a house and how it's divided and redivided and, and shaped. But the exterior, what people see as they ride by is what we're trying to preserve. Well, no, I think you're conflating two different things. Right now, what we're trying to preserve is the entire house. Right. Um, we're, but we are not telling people, again, to reiterate what to do with their houses. And as Monica said, people own their houses, but we are trying to create um, a thoughtful process <laughs> so to protect um, the history that is left. And if something is given a demolition permit to um, make sure that there is proper documentation, which is not us being told, uh, we have two days, said Victor over with the camera, <laughs> sort of documentation. Not that Victor doesn't do an amazing job, but we want to get more formal like drawings and all of that. And I know Joe is um, trying to figure out what that price point might be, because I think there's also different levels of documentation. Right. And probably, again, we could base that on tiers. Like, obviously, I think the oldest buildings, we would want as much documentation as possible. Also kind of having um, stuff in there to make sure that stuff is salvaged. Um, well, stuff is salvaged. And if, if somebody's willing to take the building, that the building can be moved rather than destroyed. Um, well, that's not, then it's not historic. I mean, that, that could be one of the cutoffs. If a building is moved, it's no longer historic. I don't know. I mean, some townships have done that. Um, on the other hand, if you want to be a purist, yeah, you know, it has to be in an original situation. And, and then to what extent do exterior buildings contribute or not contribute to the, to the site? So that becomes, I mean, we can go down, you rat, talk about rabbit holes. We can go down really deep ones. Um, and that would trouble, I would, I would guess, from having done this once before in the late 90s and being pretty much squashed by township um, homeowners, um, you know, that would present a great deal of hardship for some people and they won't, wouldn't want to do it. Well, no, I mean, what, what I think we were saying about that is if the demolition, you know, yeah. if they're putting in for the permit and there is somebody that's willing to make, because a few meetings ago, somebody came and said, I'd have that house put on my property, like that we're just not losing all of the history. Um, yeah. I mean, to me, it's better that the house be moved than to be torn down if those are our two choices. All right, so I, I can't really see it happening much because I would imagine it's quite pricey to move a house. <laughs> exactly. It is quite pricey. And the houses that we're looking at here, all three um, have stone components. Torbert's is wooden. Doug has some wooden buildings on his property. I have never been at them. Um, and the first step, of course, is to get in to be able to see it. It's private property. They can forbid us to come on their private property. So, you know, we have to be maintain some friendliness with owners and stewards of these properties and request them to cooperate with us in this endeavor, too. Well, I think, I mean, hopefully the ordinance will have a, at least a slight bit of meat as far as if you're going to approve it, there will be um, some documentation. And of course, you know, that would be coordinated with the homeowner and all of that. Um, 
I mean, I would love for us to get in them too, but that's probably not feasible in most situations. Well, yeah, <laughs> unless it's a, an abandoned building, which we've also had a few of those. Yeah, Torbert's are abandoned, a lot of them. Um, uh, it's thorny. It's really thorny, and it's a difficult situation. But you know, we have to do what we can um, as stewards of these buildings and township board of supervisors have that responsibility to preserve Pennsylvania's history. So they need to be able to have some tools to do that. Yeah, and, and the other piece of it that is super important to me is the um, whatever meat there's gonna be as far as the demolition by neglect. Um, Absolutely. Because <laughs> we, we all know, we've all seen that in our community and- yeah. and, and and partial you know, issues for buildings that township can control. So yeah, there's, there's real issues. Mm -hmm. I know it might be a little over our heads, but um, it almost would be worth urging the county to consider some sort of tax incentive to structures that were protected, um, you know, especially voluntarily if the county decided, hey, you know, if someone wanted to like elect their built their property become protect under like a protected status, then they would receive some sort of tax break on property taxes. We have done that in the past, and that's that was the notorious facade easements that. Um, <clears throat> uh, past lawyers of the Board of Supervisors recommended. And we, it was an effective tool to some extent until we got the facedectomy at Scammell's Corners. But um, <clears throat> basically, the what the public sees as they go by, it, it, I'll just reiterate that, is the thing that we're trying to preserve more than anything else, or at least document so that you have the sense of it, what it looked like as through the centuries as it was standing. Um, what comes up next afterwards, if the building is demolished, will never be of the same quality as that. You know, that's that's the problem, so. Well, I guess we could see whether our county commissioners have RSVP'd in the positive to our event on Saturday. <laughs> how well we're supported by them. Because no matter how much you put things together, to try to, to save, save the facade. We've done that in the past. It's all about how the Board of Supervisors um, implements the restrictions. If they kind of make a law and then don't enforce it ever, then that's, that's not good either. Well, I think that, that it, it is also our job and the community's job to advocate to the Board of Supervisors when they're discussing this Absolutely. that, um, one, there be a little bit of meat to the ordinance, and two, that um, I, I know we talked about this very much in the beginning, that there be actual policies in place, like written policies in place as to how this happens. You can't just take something down, not ask permission at all. Right. I mean, they people are getting demolition permits now, and Joe is being notified, but beyond that, it's been um, a little... Like I said, you know, you all have had the two days notice and gone to some of these different places. And I know Victor has taken pictures of more than one location, Grey Nun coming to the top of my head. Um, and the house on Mill Road. Yeah, that one. So I think that, you know, it, it behooves us to make a strong statement, which is why I wanted to have this discussion. <laughs> um, and, and so we have some information to present to the Board of Supervisors and advocate and hopefully some community members will advocate because I know when this first came on the um, our agenda we had a bunch of angry people in our audience um, who unfortunately aren't here tonight for the record we've turned them into happy volunteers so I'm just saying <laughs> well not yet but then uh, you work your magic Monica well, no I think but I, I think there's a lot of people that are really interested and and we know the line on Facebook to get them through we get Luke can help us out, get them all their attention for sure. But I think we need to be clear on what we're saying. Right. So I'm not sure if we're having much of a general consensus here other than we want some meat and we want a possible, um, I don't know that we have a consensus on, on dates. Um, I like the tears. Yeah. I really, I am too uneducated on this to, to voice a really strong opinion. I want to save things. But I don't, I don't understand enough to, to throw my hat in the ring on, on lots of 
I'm standing back and letting the people that know what they're talking about kind of lead this. Um, but I think the tier idea is really smart. I just don't want us at this point to get caught in the details because that will never move forward. So I think making those those three pre-1800 up to 1899 and up to post-World War II. There you go. Let's start there. That's what you said before, right? Right. Uh, I, I would say post-World uh, World War II. And um, I don't know, is there, Helen, a, another definition of historically significant that includes like architecture, famous person living there? There is a third category for National Register, which is connection of the building to a famous person or event. So if we can say, yes, Washington did sleep there, yes, it's a historic house automatically, um, if it's documented. If there's no documentation and he was in the neighborhood, you know, it's, um, it's there are family stories. It says it's somewhere in a Bible, but, you know, you don't know whether that's just a story that somebody um, made up later. Ultimately, it'll we will really utilize our resource survey for right. this, right? So I think we that need to put into this referencing that at all times that, that's yeah we, i think we have to find a way to reference something that isn't done because the ordinance is happening before yeah, the survey for sure but i'm saying those specific like the dates exactly. we don't need the survey for but those specific special ones it's going to be about referencing the historic survey and that's the thing like until we have that done i don't know how we know that outside of helen's brain like so that's why we're working on it and i think we have to call out specific well, we did, things for the last time or whatever. It was 1996. Yeah. So that was the last, that's a historic survey to think that you're looking at there. Is that the 96 one or? I don't believe it had a date on it. Oh, okay. I can tell you if I see it. But it does say it's a printed document that hopefully exists here somewhere. Yeah, that's the thing. I think a lot of the information isn't really accessible from my understanding. It's certainly not in the system that they use now. <clears throat> so I am seeing in the Google Drive something that says 2007 Survey of Historic Resources. Okay. okay that was that was just, yeah, that was the one last one that was okay. done. So she used the 96 one to base hers on. So we were keeping up at that mm -hmm. point. But at some point, at that point, actually, after 2007, it got dropped by the current, um, basically, change in the in the township between managers etc so it wasn't done in 17 and now we're looking at probably 27 to get it finished so in the survey i haven't looked at that recently so i apologize but is there like a list of i mean how is it broken down in the historic property, property numbers okay but property numbers how is it how are we reading that and identifying things that are of historical significance um they were all based on the, the windshield survey of 1980 by Jeff Marshall and Kathy Ann Araba. Heritage Conservancy did it in eight, 1980. So these were the same, somebody retraced their steps and looked at the houses they looked at, found ones they had missed, added them to the list, took out the ones that had been demolished, and that's what we you know had then used for 2007. The person in 2007 was an intern from uh, the course over at Bucks, the, the historic preservation course. And she looked at all the properties that were listed and took pictures of every property, but some of them were obviously wrong and they were past, um, way past, like 50 years past the, um, the time that was cited on the on the thing. So obviously the house had been torn down and a new house put on the site. So that that was just sort of stopped at, at the, the end of the surveying part and never uh, collated. So that's what happened. He, she got fired basically by Terry. So um, so everything got left right there. And um, and we have her books, her pictures. The she had written it on a standard national register form, so she had done. An, I mean, she was a trained fox, so she knew what she was doing. Um, her pictures are some are good, some are not. But that is um, that's what we're hoping this new survey would correct, and actually 
trace what section of the house is the oldest section, what section is probably 20 years later, what section is added well, on. This Our first, the survey we're doing right now is still just a windshield. Is that what, yeah, that's what I think where we are. Yeah, yeah, we're, so we're just getting basic information of every property in LMT, the dates. And well, a, a, a guessing gate. Yeah. Because it's from, I see the original windshield survey had buildings mismarked as well. Mm -hmm. So they, they looking from the curb, since they were not all, allowed to knock on the door. Um, the one who did it in 2007 didn't limit herself. She went right up and knocked on everybody's door and got permission sometimes to go in the house and actually correct her first estimate of it. But uh, Kathy Ann and Jeff did not. They just sat on the at the curb and took pictures from the street. Often some of these houses were 300 feet away as they were dating them and they made mistakes. So our initial survey was a mistake. It had some considerable mistakes in it. It's just, what well, what can you do? You know, you do what you can. Um, most, of, most of the ones were, as I said, 96 was a pretty good year. We had some people working on it that knew what they were doing. And if we had just collated 2007, we wouldn't be in this problem. Okay, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to download the document and it's just very large okay. and it's so confusing my here, computer. The problem here is um, we need yeah. to uh, put some time into it. Yeah, I mean, I'm just wondering once we get that report, how do we say these are houses we want to protect in, in a way that could be in an ordinance? Well, I, I think the tier system that that, that, mm -hmm. call that would make perfect sense. So again, you want to call out specific properties, Kathy? Well, you have to, the problem with the doing tax numbers is that just from two, it's from 96 to 2000, um, lots had been cut up with, with additional houses being put on the original lots. Mm -hmm. So you, it still has the, the tag number of the original house, but it, then it's it's got 001 and 002 yeah. and 003. Mm -hmm. So where the house may be on 005, mm -hmm. you know, so that changes. So you have to have some kind of description of the house that um, that actually kind of takes it back to what is this, who was the original builder or who was the, the largest the homeowner that lived there the longest. That's what we eventually did to name, especially the house before 1800. So we tried not to pick current owners. We picked historic owners. Yeah, no, the reason I'm asking for clarification, Monica, is that like, uh, oh, what's the date we're doing the survey to? How, 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 what? The original one was 1980. Okay. So this one, you should say. This one. How how far back are we surveying? What what was that? What's the oldest house in the townships? No 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 no. The most recent house. How recent? Oh, the most are? recent one was two thousand seven. I got you. I got you. It was on CD. So our first phase of the survey that we're doing this year, twenty through twenty twenty five, I believe is through nineteen thirty nine. Okay, so depending on whether we go post nineteen hundred or not. It's only so, five more years yet to 1945. Yeah, yeah so, but if we're, if we're going to go to 39, um, are we doing it just based on age or are we doing it based on it's called out for historic reasons other than that? I thought we were doing to like something crazy like the 70s or something or the 50s. No, I think, I mean, what, <laughs> what we said earlier, you know, eight, 1800, I think the first two tiers are definitely, or age, maybe even the third, because the third is is World War II, right? And then, or maybe if we want the third, I don't know. I think either the third or past the third, then we say special, you know, historic reason based on architecture or fame or whatever it was the things you said. Or well, well, development too. I mean, it, basically, starting in 1923, Lower Makefield had developments where houses were built in a specific spot, mm -hmm. usually around an older property, but not necessarily. Sometimes property was turned out and all the houses, particularly like those in Edge Hill Gardens are all 
Art Nouveau or, or art, um, art Deco houses mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that reflect past style. So there's neo-Gothics, yeah. there's neo um, uh, colonials, there's I think Taffy, to answer your question, I think it should be based on date. Yeah. For ease. Mm -hmm. And then after yeah. our top, whatever it is, 45, whatever we say, then it's special reasonings or whatever. And then I'm assuming what we're saying is each tier it's a little looser with each, yeah. you know, right? Well, there are there after that, they are stick built houses, so tracked houses by a particular builder. Mm -hmm. And it can, could have been a builder architect. It could have just been a builder. Some of them were actually mansions built by people with wealthy people with a lot of money. So they'll have an architect like Oscar, can't think of his name, from Doylestown. Jeff Marshall's been calling me with um, requests on homes that were built by Oscar Martin. Um, and so there are several of those in Lower Makefield. So that kind of thing would call it out as a special house. A lot of those are right along the Yardley Morrisville Road. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so, so maybe what we need Helen to do is just make a list of anything post World War II that could fall into that needs to have a red flag. So any specific architecture aware of or anything special like that, and well, we that need a list just like that. Require me looking through the permits in the office. Cool. You know, so we could I, do that. Yeah, I think because I think we need someone that understands architecture to know what right. is special, and that should be a specific list, right? Yeah. Okay. So can you do that list for next month? Like, I'm not saying you have to get all the specific houses. No, I'm saying I, the list, okay. like yeah, what, the, what, oh, the the top level architects, historic person or whatever. Um, I'm also wondering, and I can check because this historic survey, apparently they scanned it one page at a time. Yeah. It's not one document. <laughs> no. So it's pretty useless. Um, well, the ultimate goal for our township with, with the township managers was to make it so that someone in the zoning department could pull up immediately our list of houses with their dark tax parcel number and say, oh, there's going to be a problem with this permit because this is in our X tier and we have to, we, you have to, you're going to have to fulfill this yeah. form, <laughs> you know? Yes. That's, that's what we wanted to get to. Yes. And I definitely think that should be part of it. I think we got that. Okay. Well, I'll work with, I'll, so I'll call Jim Majewski and explain what happened, and we'll we'll look at, at creating those tiers for you. Great, thank you. Any other comments on this? I know you guys are all kind. Of <laughs> They're like, oh. all right. Uh, public comment. Shockingly, nobody's on the Zoom room wanting to come in. Either of you want to say anything before we? <laughs> are we done? Really? That's the agenda. Wow. Are, are we allowed to? Have our other guests in the back come introduce themselves. Welcome to the party. Hi. Do you have any questions? Here, come to the microphone, introduce yourself. Or maybe Joe will watch this. That's <laughs> you have to hit the mic. We have to be all official because this is all taped and recorded. Thank you, Dawn. <laughs> David Burden. I'm Willow Mayfield, uh, Yardley resident. Welcome, David. Thank so, you. what's um, David? You David is my my neighbor. Do no, you live in Yardley or LMT. He's LMT. LMT. Okay. He's my neighbor. Um, so, what's your background? Because I haven't talked to you directly about this. So, what's your background interest in historic stuff? Just so we all know. I had a. I lived in um, Upper Dublin. I had a 1732 house that I restored myself. Uh, Whereabouts? Right on the corner of Susquehanna. I know where that is. Okay. Yeah, my daughter lives right on um, Norristown Road. Okay. And it was uh, just past Tennis, oh. going east on Norristown Road. And it was on the, the left side. So it was totally covered in bushes. You couldn't even see that it was a historic house. It was in the second tier for Lower, Upper Dublin. So it had an 1840 date stone right on the front of it. Yes, I, I live in a, an old house now. Mm -hmm. So it's a 1890. It's the most exciting house. I've ever seen. Just really love the. Where where is it exactly? It's on Northwest Bellevue. The driveway goes all the way back. Um, mm -hmm. right. Are you living in the old uh, Tomlinson house? Is that where you are? 
You, yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure I know you. I lived, uh, I grew up on Alton Road, okay. very close by. Yep. Well, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, Dave is interviewing okay. with the Board of Supervisors to join us. Did you, do you have any training in, in history at all or? No, it's just a lot of stuff. You're interested in it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A history geek. Woohoo. <laughs> Are you a cemetery geek too or just a house geek? Looks like it was made yesterday, but it's probably for a civil war. What was the name? Do you still have? You have it. Oh, could it be um, a Van Sant? No, it wasn't. It was a more of like a uh, oh my god, find out. Yes, we, you tell know, us, if you, we know that because we have some stones that are missing. That we, we have a lot of missing, missing. <laughs> that somebody might have like. Just use it to. It looks brand new. It looks like it's never been. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Well, that's cool. Well, know. definitely send us some pictures because, yeah, we are, at least some of us are cemetery geeks. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll take that. We'll take that. There were several that used to be leaning up against the wall. So, you know, and they had lost their, they had somehow migrated across the cemetery at night. And um, yeah, I, I was thinking people would take those for garden paths and stuff. So who knows? You know, I'm sure. Um, interesting. Well, I mean, a lot of the houses in our neighborhood are historic. One of the other houses is a, a Huff house. A Huff house. A Huff lived there. Yeah. Which that's I think that I think that address is Delaview though. Yeah. So I think it's the Mead House probably. No, it's a Huff house because I looked at one it, of those books that you made. Stuff up? No. But anyway, we can debate this later. Um, so we can let people go home. Um, all right. No more public comment. Nobody is in the Zoom room. I can't believe I coordinated all of this. Motion to Wait, next meeting is October 9th at 7.30. Um, and everybody be at Slate Hill this weekend at, for us, 3 o'clock. For everybody else, 4.30, because, you know, 30 to 40 servings of ice cream or gelato, whatever it is, could go fast. <laughs> Um, all right, I will entertain a motion. I'm honored. <laughs> okay, so Victor makes a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Yay. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs>